Hi all, in this video we'll look at 5 ways in which we can optimize the performance of React Flow. So let's get started. So first of all, we'll look at memorization. So right now you can see if I am moving this node around, you can see that the node movement is not smooth and it's janky. And the reason is not really related to the React Flow component or the React Flow state, anything React Flow related, it is related to this sidebar component. Now this sidebar component has some buttons which I can drag into the React Flow component and that would basically create different types of nodes. Whenever we move a node, what happens is that the node state updates. So if I move a node around, let's say from here to here, the node state would update countless number of times, you know, like 20 to 30 times. Because of that, these icon buttons which I'm mapping in the sidebar component would map again and again the number of times the node state is changing. So even if I move a node around from one place to another, like covering not so much distance, these buttons would render that many times. And if the buttons number is huge, then basically that would slow down the whole app. And because of that, the node's movement would be janky as well. So what we need to do is we need to separate this component into its own component, and we need to wrap it with the react.memo so that the node state update doesn't affect this component. So let's do that. So basically I've got this example right here. I have uh, nodes and edge state. Then basically here I have a sidebar where I'm mapping some icon buttons. Now this components array is a dummy array with thousand buttons. So every time the node state changes, these buttons get mapped. So a thousand buttons get mapped. Due to this, the entire app is getting slow. So what I will do is I will basically move this entire thing outside into its own component and the only dependency which i need from this component is the on drag start method so the on drag start function is basically just the function which would take the type of the node and then set it to a ref so that i can use it to see which particular node should i add on the ref flow so this is the only dependency so I'll copy this and i will create a new component i will go to the components folder and i would say nodes sidebar or tsx this will return the whole markup let me import the components let me import the constant for the buttons yeah so the only thing remaining is the on drag start function so i will Place it here as a prop. I will copy the type. So this should be the type. Cool. And let me wrap it with react.memo. So I'll say const node sidebar is equal to react.memo. Great. Let me export it. Let me add the arrow. So now I'll place this component in the original position. Let me import it. And I'll say on drag start is equal to on drag start. I need to wrap this with use callback as well so that it only renders once. Now you can see that I am able to move the nodes around in a smooth manner and the node movement is not janky because the on drag start method would be created only once using the use callback and that would go as a dependency to the sidebar component and the buttons would only map once. So you know now this sidebar component is totally isolated from the workflow component so now you know you won't face any jankiness and the node movement would be smooth. Another way in which we can optimize the flow is by memoizing the expensive node. So this node is very simple, you know, it has got a flag and the name of the country, nothing special. This node is simple as well, just got a text field and a heading. This node, however, is expensive. Why is it expensive? Because it has got a popover with 300 fields. Now, when I say we need to optimize a node, we need to basically think of ways in which we can, you know, separate the logic into its individual components so right now i am using the chakra ui popover now chakra ui popover by default renders the popover content as the 
component is rendered as well. So even if I hide it, this particular 300 fields still exist. They are just not visible, but they still exist in the DOM. So what we can do is, I can go to the expensive node component. So what I can do is I can come here and I can say is lazy. So now you will see that the node moment is cool. So basically what is lazy does is it lazily renders the popover content. So whenever I would click on this button, then the popover content would be shown or mounted. Otherwise, you know, it doesn't exist. Similarly, when I click on something else, it would be unmounted. So right now only this button and this text content are present inside the node. So, you know, the node movement is smooth. When I click on it, then these fields are rendered and I can, you know, fill the information in the fields, etc. Then I can remove it again and then move the node. So this was just for an example, but what we need to do is if there is a node and there is a lot of content inside that node, first of all, try to memoize it, you know, maybe use stuff like use memo, use callback. If there are children components in that particular node, then try to memoize them as well using rec.memo and basically try that nodes have as much less content as possible. And if you want to show some node content, maybe show in a modal or maybe show it in a popover, which lazily mounts, you know, it doesn't render the content all the time. Otherwise your node movement would be slow. Okay, so the next example is lazily rendering nodes. So in this particular example, I have rendered 10,000 nodes. Now these 10,000 nodes by default are rendered inside the React flow. So that means 10,000 React components and that is a huge number. And you will see that when I try to move a node around, the movement is not that smooth because obviously it makes sense. So what you can do is you can use the only render visible elements prop in the React flow component. So I can go here. I can go to this component and here I can pass a prop. So only render visible elements. So now you will see that the node movement is smooth again because when this prop is true, React Flow component only renders the nodes which are present in the viewport. So even though the total number of nodes in the React Flow component is 10,000, the nodes in the viewport are not 10,000. They are, you know, maybe like 300, 400 not so many. So what would happen is when I would change the viewport, React Flow would unmount or mount the nodes based on what nodes are present inside the viewport. And that basically gives a huge boost to performance if you have a lot of nodes. Again, in this example, I have the expansive node which isn't moving very smoothly. And if memoization isn't improving the performance of the component as well, then we can do something else. So we can enable snapping. So snapping is a feature in which the node movement won't be smooth. It would be in a grid like format, but because of that grid like format, the node state update wouldn't happen that frequently. They would happen every time you would move the node across the grid. So if the snapping grid is like 50 by 50, the state update would only happen when you would move the node around 50 pixels and that would improve the performance of your deck flow. So what we can do is I am in the component. What I can do is I can say snap to grid. I can set it to true, then the snap grid. So the snap grid is basically the grid in which it should move. So I will give it an array 50, 50. So basically now this node would move in a 50 by 50 grid. It cannot jump 10 pixels or 20 pixels. It would always jump 50 pixels and because of that the node movement isn't feeling that junky and the node state update would also not happen very frequently you know after every one pixel moment that would only update after a 50 pixel moment because that is the step in that we have selected so this is a way as well in which you can improve performance okay so now i've got another example let's say you have a big node tree you know you have a root that root has a lot of subtrees and then a lot of subtrees as well. And then maybe you have like a thousand or two thousand nodes in your React flow. What you can do is you can add a functionality where by default a lot of trees are collapsed, but if the user wants, they can expand and see the nodes. So by default, only a few nodes would be shown, and you can show that you know the these node trees can be expanded. And if the user wants, they can click on the node tree root, and then the whole tree would be shown. So how will I do this? Basically, I have a node structure right here. So I have a parent node. This parent node has a children property and that children property has got an array 
with the IDs of the child nodes. So these are the child nodes two, three, and four. So what I will do is if I click on a node and that node has a children property in the data object of that node, then I want to get all the nodes with these IDs and I want to toggle the hidden property of those nodes. You know, that is simple. So let's do that. So I will go here and the on node click function. I will say if target node data children. So if the node which I have clicked has a property children in the data object, that means it is a parent node, then I want to I will say prev nodes, prev nodes dot map node. If target node data children includes the node ID, then I want to return the node object, but slightly modified so it would be inverse of the hidden property of the previous node. Otherwise, I want to return the node. Let me add a type here. Cool. So now if I click on it, you will see that the nodes disappear, appear, disappear, reappear, etc. And in this way, you can only show a certain level of trees, a certain level of nodes. You can give user a, an indication that, hey, you, if you want, you can expand this tree. And then once you click on a node, you can basically expand the tree using this method or whatever method you want. But in this way, you will render fewer nodes on the rec flow and you know, the whole rec flow, workflow, whatever you have would be optimized. So yeah, these are five ways in which we can optimize the rec flow. And if you know any way which was not in one of these five ways, then do let me know down in the comments below so that others can learn from it as well. As always, keep supporting, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.